Hello, this is Tom with LibertarianProgressive.com. What you're about to see and hear is my latest interview with Christina Tobin, the founder of FreeAndEqual.org. Uh, it's the interview in full. I'm uh, not edited. I don't edit any of the interviews. Uh, what's really important here is um, Free and Equal, I think, has the potential to be um, uh, a, a big, impactful organization in the years and election cycles to come. It's, uh, I think you will see the potential and, um, and already the uh, exponential growth of this, and it's something that is definitely needed in this marketplace of ideas. And uh, it's such a great organization. Um, it's come at the right time, and I think this is something that you want to spread the word about, uh, share with friends, family, um, citizens. Um, it goes beyond party politics, and it's something that's uh, needed, um, and that is free and equal elections and fair debates. Please watch this, and um, at the end of the interview, I will explain a little bit about uh, libertarianprogressive.com. Thank you. Hello, it is uh, February the 5th, 2012. My name is Thomas Keegan, uh, founder of libertarianprogressive.com. Um, you can check out my website if you want to learn more about that. Today, I'm interviewing Christina Tobin, uh, one of the founders and spokespersons for Free and Equal, uh, which is freeandequal.org. And um, Christina is someone of interest that I've wanted to interview here um, because um, if there's, well, there's many people nowadays, but if there's someone in particular who I would guess is going to make history and, and make a significant impact on the times that we live in, someone that I would probably, you know, um, humbly say that I'd vote for president for as uh, is Christina, but um, I think she'll say in her own words here, Christina, if you could please tell me what, um, what, what, uh, what you see the vision of our country, um, what changes do you think are going to happen in the next couple of years to... Uh, you know, um, to help America be peaceful and prosperous, uh, what so many people want, but not a lot of people feel like we're going in the right uh, direction. What do you say about that, That where we can change our course, and, and, and what are the ways, like how are we going to do that? Christina, and thank you very much for being part of this interview. Well, Tom, first of all, I'm really uh, humbled by everything you said. I'm kind of blushing, <laughs> so thank you so much, and uh, free and equal elections, we wouldn't be here without you know, grassroots, honest media like yourself with uh, libertarianprogressive.com. So thank you so much for all the work you do, endless every day, in and out. And, uh, I guess for your supporters and your listeners, that is, you know, maybe they'd want to know what Free and Equal is about. And here at Free and Equal Elections, uh, we're here about, we're here to uh, break the stranglehold of the two-party system and to reform the electoral system throughout the United States. And we sure have a long-term plan for that. Uh, we are here to stay, and something I plan on doing for the rest of my life. I'm 31 years of age right now. And uh, as you may uh, recall, and I think that's how we connected, was really last year uh, when we held the presidential debate uh, moderated by Larry King and, and myself, a co-moderator. And, uh, you know, we reached over 20 million people worldwide, changed the national dialogue, and you know, brought in four candidates uh, across the spectrum from the Green Party, Jill Stein, Gary Johnson, Libertarian, Rocky Anderson, Justice Party, and Virgil Good with the Constitution Party. And we really, um, we really opened up that dialogue. And, and so many, you know, media outlets, all of them internationally, had no idea that there were more than two parties in the United States. I could tell you pretty much every single international media outlet, dozens that I spoke to, had no idea. So... Here at Free and Equal, we have a lot of projects uh, going on now in 2013. We're busier than ever, uh, even after the election, and um, we're going to have a huge event in Little Rock, Arkansas uh, this spring, uh, which will unite leaders, um, featured speakers we expect to have, anywhere from, of course, Gary Johnson and Jill Stein to Jesse Ventura and Dennis Kucinich. I've been in touch with all of them corresponding, and, and uh you know, hopefully beyond that, maybe uh, Dr. Ron Paul and many other leaders, uh, honest uh, musicians, celebrities, uh, authors, uh, G. Edward Griffin and of uh, Creature Jekyll Island and on and on, and bringing all these leaders together for a fun movement at a university or near one in Little Rock and uh, working with 
great leaders on the ground from the Occupy Wall Street movement, the Tea Party movement, the, you know, lots of independents. I mean, just people like you and I and your listeners that are standing up for, uh, you know, our, our, our freedom here in the United States, for that matter, the world. And um, so, you know, I don't want to keep going on and on. These are just some of the projects. We have a potentially a huge university tour in the fall, 10 different stops across the nation. And um, we're also working uh, hard on launching our national database, which is the heart a free and equal, which I could go in greater detail with uh, later on in the interview. So we really are working hard, and our team is growing um, quite quite rapidly here at Free and Equal. Well, yeah, uh, I mean, I think a it, great thing to see. <laughs> it was a great tribute to what you've done, having um, Larry King uh, co-host uh, one of the presidential debates um, that you sponsored, and uh, and people can watch those debates. I mean, it's still pretty entertaining to watch, um, and, and more than entertaining, informative, to watch Jill Stein versus Gary Johnson, Virgil Good, and Rocky Anderson. Um, I, well, I have a question. I think that's great that you're going around the country, kind of doing a tour, um, getting the voice out, um, the word out. Uh, a lot of, w may I ask you what um, stations, or who carried your debates? I mean, it did get over 20 million views, and, and they can be seen at freeandequal.org. You can also probably find it on YouTube. But um, at the end of the day, who, w which organizations in 2012, I know you hope to have more in 2013, but what all groups did end up airing um, these uh, debates? Well, the, the way we got the international media's attention was working through grassroots media outlets like yourself and many others, 50, 100, and uh, we had them all in co as co-sponsors of the debate, and we didn't ask for any money. All we asked was, could you just please help promote the debate in return, maybe put our logo on your website, and, you know, that started generating a lot of stir and interest within the grassroots community across the spectrum throughout the United States, and, and then we broke through the, um, well, the international media really came to us, and so Al Jazeera throughout the Middle East, uh, they covered us, which is huge. Um, RT America throughout Russia covered us, huge. Um, lots of other media outlets, Fox on the ground, CNN radio, a C-SPAN came in literally the day of. Yeah. <laughs> At the very end, I mean, finally they got a lot of calls from supporters and uh, they came on board. So, uh, and, and YouTube, uh, that's really great. Larry King's uh, um, Aura TV really, really wonderful. Of course, he supports Free and Equal. So, it, you know, it was really amazing doing the debate. I have to say, getting Larry King as a moderator was much, much easier than getting all four of these candidates to confirm for the debate. I mean, we even had one one candidate uh, potentially, you know, uh, maybe almost going to pull out right before. I mean, it's just you're dealing with so many personality types and campaigns and not even the candidates themselves. And But we pulled it off took the risk, and we had a successful debate because this is about the people. It's for the people, and that's what we're about here at freeandequal.org. Yeah, and Free Larry Equal. King didn't really surprise me because, after all, he kind of got Ross Perot going, um, and um, and he's always seemed to interview um, alternate candidates and Ron Paul and Jesse Ventura. Um, as And that's not so unusual to think more Americans and, and people worldwide would want to hear more voices. Um, most People, the Gallup poll, according to last year, the Democrats and Republicans reached record lows twice last year. Um, so, a lot, there's a, the internet is one way to get the media across. I mean, can you believe that, like, about 30% of our population still doesn't have internet access um, and still has to get their news from, you know, Fox, NBC, CBS, and hopefully they'll carry. <laughs> This as well, um, in, in 2014, there's a couple of special elections in 2013. Um, I mean, it seems like all the things are stewing up, like, you know, if you look at the polls of people disgruntled with Congress, people wanting more voices. I mean, a lot of people I talk to, they say, Gary Johnson, Gary who? And I'm like, well, please watch that debate. Um, what, what do you see, like, with the... The state that we're in, I mean, it seems like, you know, there, there couldn't, it's almost building the perfect storm because people are dissatisfied, people are more aware, um, you know, people are going to need to find some alternative solutions, um, and they just need to be really informed and educated. I mean, even just telling people you should vote for Gary Johnson or Jill Stein, even more fundamental than that is... Um, do you know all your choices? I mean, I think if more people like them that were, are qualified on the ballots have a legitimate chance to win, um, we're actually in the debates. We would end up having more third-party candidates and independents in Congress and uh, the Senate and, and maybe presidents. Um, what do you think um, 
you, you know, looking forward to 2014 and beyond, perhaps some special elections in 2013. Uh, what, what do you think is going to happen? I mean, do you think um, these debates will help people be more informed? Um, do you think this is something America wants? Um, you know, it's kind of in that spirit. Um, what, what would you predict um, or where do you think the trend line is going and how do you think that's going to happen? Well, what a great question. I mean, uh, one thing I learned from the debate, the biggest thing is that uh, the youth are, are huge. They're going to come out in full force for the 2014 local races, 18 to 28 year olds. The power of social networking, social media. I mean, we were top 10 trending on Twitter, you know, out of the woodworks. No, nope. I mean, really, Larry King debate, top 10 and 20 million and all this coverage, of course, the mainstream media, ABC, NBC, CBS, you know, they didn't cover us because they're, you know, essentially kind of owned, really, they work with the Commission on Presidential Debate, which is controlled, you know, by big money elite, and uh, so here at Free and Equal, you know, we, we do hope and, and, and we're co quite confident that we're going to be in a position to put the Commission on Presidential Debates out of business, it's, you know, been committing a fraud on the voters for quite some time, according to the League of Voters and Free and Equal, and uh, but beyond all that, you know, we're bigger than just a, an organization that puts on debates, uh, you know, which is a great jump start. But we're here to fix things. And when you look at every problem from the NDAA, SOPA, Patriot Act, I mean, on and on, drones, war, drug war, every problem stems from a tainted electoral system. So we've got to reform the electoral system, and that's what the national database is all about uh, here at freeandequal.org. Um, we are working quite heavily on that in the upcoming months throughout the year. And what that database will not only do is list every single candidate running for office, um, whether they're running with a party or not. I do expect a lot of independents to run in 14, even more in 16, and so on as the ballot access barriers are removed and uh, potentially a flat filing fee is implemented across the U.S., $500 or whatnot, like Louisiana and Colorado. Um, but in any case, mm -hmm. um, I anticipate a lot of uh, people running for office, and we're going to create that level playing field that will not only um, help people to see who's running for office, but highlight uh, you know, who's uh, donating to their campaigns. Uh, there might be a platform of 10 or 20 items where uh, pure candidates, uh, left or right leaning across the spectrum, um, you know, things that Ron Paul and Ralph Nader uh, can agree on, uh, maybe even Dennis Kucinich, uh, you know, from ending the NDA, SOPA, uh, drone war. So that's one component of the national database, which, of course, um, will evolve into, uh, well, uh, maintaining integrity within the electoral system. And I do foresee government uh, shifting back to the origins of the Constitution, some constitutional estates needs to be cut back up to 80%. Well, here at Free and Equal, we're just going to create the, you know, the database, the platform, the movement, and, and let the people decide what's best for them. But with government being cut back, integrity will come to the surface. And it'll be really interesting to see uh, uh, uniting the Constitution with social networking and technology, what, what will evolve of that. And I'm really excited. It's going to be a great year, and next year will be even better. Well, you're providing something that's needed in the market. Like if I lived like in the wetlands and like we needed canoes or something to get around there, whoever, you know, was got in the business of making canoes would probably make a lot of money. I mean, that might be a weird example, but um, we're, you know, right now the only products we can buy is um, or vote for is Republicans and Democrats. And there really isn't, well, there are other ones out there. And um, I mean, isn't most people like um, they're not even registered as a Republican and Democrat. I think most people are registered True. independents. And yeah, I think Sogby is 30, 40% polling and increasing probably every day. <laughs> and most people don't even, I mean, I think half the time people don't even vote. So when someone actually wins an election, they're really just getting 25% of the popular votes. Um, uh, because um, that's, they're getting like, they might win by 51%, but that's just a 50% of people who decided to turn out. Um, and uh, so um, they, they really if don't. I, if, I, if I may on the voting, I don't even hold it against somebody that didn't vote this last election because the two-party system has it so rigged that it, it seems quite feasible and believable. Well, it, it is the fact that, I mean, it, <laughs> the votes, you know, people coming out saying they didn't vote this past election, again, I don't hold it against them because the system leads you to believe that your vote does count when, in fact, it, it kind of doesn't. There's all this voter fraud, and we saw what happened to Ron Paul in Florida. 
I mean, some say that the Republican Party, not the campaign, I've learned within working within the Libertarian Green Party National, ooh, the campaigns are separate. Gary Johnson, I see as an individual, not as a Libertarian. Jill Stein, I see as an individual, not as a Green. You know, they have to run on these party lines because of the restrictive ballot access barriers, and when we remove that, to foresee people, candidates like them running as independents in the future. But in any case, uh, you know, I, I just, you know, um, you know, the, the system is just so tainted, and I've learned, again, working on the debates and, and hands-on the campaigns, I feel very strongly that parties, in fact, don't work. Um, the Constitution doesn't even mention parties. Our forefathers uh, even say parties are evil, though they themselves became <laughs> part of that problem as mm -hmm. time of, uh, you know, but uh, in any case, uh, you know, parties don't work. It's gotten us where we are today, and, and uh, the two-party system has been playing us for centuries. And again, you know, Green Party, Libertarian, as they become larger, uh, Tom, you know, they become infiltrated. There's bad seeds at the national level. I've seen it on the inside, both Libertarian and Green Party. And so, um, you know, I do urge people to, uh, whether they run as Green Party, Libertarian, and they should in 14, they can it's going to be easier to get on the ballot. But, you know, our, our database will show them truly as individuals, the independents that they are, whether they're running on party lines or not. Yeah, and, and, I ran for Secretary of State in 2010 yeah. as a Libertarian. I wanted to run as an independent, but it was 100,000 signatures. And that's what I am. I'm an independent, and an individual for that matter, awake, I guess you could say. And, uh, you know, versus a couple hundred signatures to run as a Libertarian so, or Green. So I, I, I had no choice but to run under party line. And we want to break that stranglehold as well. I feel there might be more people that are like that. I mean, I like Kucinich. I like Ron Paul. I voted for Gary Johnson, and I also voted for Ralph Nader before. I mean, seeing those issues that you mentioned, like SOPA, NDAA, all those acronyms, which are basically legislative actions that are taken away our uh, Bill of Rights. Um, and uh, so um, there are some rebuttals, like, I mean, if we, you know, it's kind of neat to look at some rebuttals. These are the things that people will say, like, um, like I'm wasting my votes. Um, I mean, why would I vote for a third party or independence when, um, you know, they don't have a chance of winning, but at least I'm going to get the lesser of two evils with the Republicans and Democrats. Um, I, I know there's a lot of responses that have already been said to that, but what, 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 do, you, what do you say to, to, to that specific thoughts sure and the complete uh, part of the, the what I was saying before and actually answers that question is that uh, complete the thought is that you know some say and I've heard from credible sources many d different directions again that the Republican Party being separate from the Romney campaign of course as I mentioned you no know, parties not really working for the most part separately from campaigns I've noticed uh, but uh, intentionally fell short of the past election so they could blame everything on the Democratic Party and come in and run Rand Paul for president in 2016 and government will still grow. I mean, that's things that I've consistently heard on the inside of people that have worked in the past or even currently um, the Rand Paul campaign acknowledging that it has been camp compromised. And so, you know, I just, I don't want people to fall for that trap. And, um, you know, Ron Paul, Ralph Nader, have, have done wonderful things for the movement, and I commend uh, Judge Napolitano. One of my favorite interviews he did before Fox Freedom Works was wrongfully shut down, I feel, because um, of some Fox executives that outnumbering bad ones, outnumbering the good ones, and making that shut down. It's just horrible. Um, not yeah, it had, Fox like, terrific that. ratings, yet it was <laughs> shut down. Unbelievable. Well, you know, it's, there were bad ones that outnumbered the good ones, and it's just not cool. Um, and in any case... Uh, you know, it's, uh, he had an interview with uh, Ron Paul and Ralph Nader uniting against the establishment. What a great interview. And it was so cute to see both of them. And like, okay, maybe we disagree on a few of these things. But they didn't even focus on that interview. It was all about how we're, you know, for ending the Federal Reserve, getting rid of drones, you know, NDAA, SOPA, no, 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 you know, drug war, war. It was such a cool interview. And uh, that is really essentially the movement of what free and equal is about. Again, to break the stranglehold of the two-party system, reform the electoral system, and uh, to bring integrity uh, within the entire system. Uh, you know, so candidates now, maybe lawyers and doctors later, I mean, we're not going to stop. And we're, um, you know, we're the hub to help build others, Tom, you know, like libertarian progressive, honest media like yourself. And we're going to have a network through L.A. and and link to entities like yourself to help drive traffic through what we're doing your way to help build up 
what you're doing and, and you know, so in all the different industries from media to uh, celebrities to music, authors, comedians, you name it, we need some laughter too <laughs> in these movements yeah. and events that we're doing. So um, it's, it's really great and I'm just uh, so honored to be on LibertarianProgressive.com and I, again, I thank you so much for the work you've done and I will always be available to you uh, to interview with you uh, as time evolves because, you know, you never forget those who helped you, helped lift you <laughs> from day one. And well, important. I think what you're starting is, um, <laughs> like, uh, th this, like, a long time ago, I, I was thinking, you know, what's, w on a fundamental level, um, you know, if I could have my ways, I would create an election channel, um, one that's, you know, publicly paid for, and it guarantees everyone gets on the debates as long as they have um, enough signatures as long as they have a, a mathematical chance to win and um and and, and these publicly funded debates is this is kind of like what you've started is like the election channel and um and uh and, and you you wow, did invite amazing. romney and, and obama on, on your debates too i think they just refused right um well we did and actually i wanted to open it up even furthermore um beyond uh the four candidates well, six that were invited, of which four attended. You know, Jill Stein, Green, Gary Johnson, Libertarian, Rocky Anderson, Justice Party, and Virgil Good, Constitution Party. The problem was is that if I had opened up even more, um, then the candidates that had confirmed would drop out, and the debate would not have happened. So, you know, we're at a level now where Free and Equal has uh, more uh, name recognition, and even more so come the next election or two, that we'll be able to open it up. I feel that, you know, at least everybody that is on the ballot uh, and uh, I, actually, I feel that anybody, for that matter, that's running for president should be uh, put into a poll, and we let the people decide through instant runoff voting who they want to have. If there's 50 people running for president, we run them all at the same time, and through IRB, people decide which 12 or 10 or 8. Um, I could, we could probably handle moderating up to 6 or 8 for the first debate. <laughs> you know, not there yet. But, you know, let the people decide through IRB who's going to be the first round of debate, so nobody's cut out. And, us, and then it continues to progress into four and, and so on, and two. Um, so this past debate, though, it was opened up more than our 2008 debate. In 2008, we had a debate with Ralph Nader, Independent, Chuck Baldwin, Constitution Party. You know, that requirement was just, I believe, to be on the ballot in enough states to be widely electable. Uh, 2012, we opened it up more, which is what brought Rocky Anderson in. We made it not only to be on the ballot in enough states to be widely electable, but received 1% in the national poll. And again, you know, by Rocky Anderson contact us last minute, not last minute, but he's like, by the way, I did get 1%. We didn't know that. And we rightfully opened it up to him. It made the debate more exciting. But the debate almost didn't happen because the candidate was going to pull out. Um, but fortunately, the other two were like, we're going to do it. And, it, you know, it, it was way more exciting. And Rocky deserved to be there. I wanted to have Roseanne Barr there. I wanted to have four or five. There, you know, there were, I think, over 30 different people who ran for president or so, maybe more, 27. Um, so throughout the United States, and we only had you know, four. <laughs> so um, in my heart felt, you know, I really wanted them all there too, but it's just a matter of, of making it actually happen, and that's the position we were in. Well, and Gary Johnson and more. Jill Stein, Virgil Good, um, Rocky, I mean, those are people who at least had a chance to win, I mean, by being on enough ballots mathematically. Um, so I think you picked a, you, you know, you picked the top tier there. Although it would be good to get everyone. I mean, how can you yeah. get your polls if you don't get in the debates? Um, so how can people help? I mean, they can obviously donate money, which will help to go to like flyers and advertisements. I mean, it would be cool to see free and equal advertisements in like USA Today and and and, and people you know, at home, opening up their mailbox and maybe getting a free and equal, um, you know, flyer or something like that, or, or hearing something happening in their neighborhood like you are doing going across the country. I, I do think the debates that you're hosting, I mean, that really is, um, I mean, that's the most important thing. Um, you know, if people, you know, more people that are in the debates, more of a chance are going to have to win. I think the debates place the biggest impact on the election, just like Jesse Ventura said. Um, so what, what are ways that you're reaching out? I mean, how's the donating going to help? I mean, people can um, organize on your website as well to uh, sign up. Um, yeah. Oh, gosh, we have, like, I mean, dozens of volunteers signing up, it seems like, every day or every couple days. And so, I mean, it's just amazing. You can go at freeandequal.org and 
there's a big volunteer tab there. Check it out and volunteer today. You know, from writers to researchers to people on the ground. Um, so those are great ways to help out. And of course, donations. Every penny is used so frugal <laughs> and and in the right way in, in making a gosh, what we've done with such a limited amount of funding is just mind boggling. So. Um, I'm, I'm going to be very happy to see what we can do when and if uh, well when we take it to the next level, which we really are. Um, so every dollar, you know, we had so many one dollar donations, hundred dollar donations, five hundred, you know, twenty five during the Larry King debate, and that helped us make that happen. So thanks to that, very great. So that's ways they can help out, and again at freeandequal.org. And you're right, the debates are so crucial, and that's why it really was the kickoff of Free and Equal. So. That national database we launched is going to have state leaders broken down to local leaders, and those leaders are going to create those true free and equal debates uh, throughout the United States to, again, open up the electoral process, uh, address voter fraud, you know, do we need proportional representation, instant runoff voting, you know, teaching, and we're going to provide the resources for conferences for all of that, and it's really exciting stuff. So I've just touched the surface of it. Again, I look forward to interviewing with you again in the future. And yeah, I look forward to it. We're <laughs> just in the last minutes here. Um, I mean, I just thought of what would be an awesome, like, um, advertisement in 2016 is, like, um, if, if you don't have all the candidates on your debates by then, um, which I hope you do, but um, if, like, let's say they're on CNN, you, if, if you've raised enough money where you could put an advertisement during the Republican and Democrat debate and saying, like, you know, the advertisement would be better than Super Bowl ad. It could say something like, you know, after you're done watching this, you know, corporate debate, why don't you check out freeandequal.org, you know, um, for the real you American debate or something like that. And um, so, um, so I th thank you. Are, you're yeah. so right. You have great foresight time, Tom, because, you know, that's what the commission does. They get $50, 60000000 million from, you know, people with big money who essentially control, uh, pro, you know, promoting war because they make money off that through the debates. It's a tool. It's a game. And, uh, you know, it's like it's just it's just a game and people's lives are at stake and it should not be that way. It's unethical. So, you know, they, they take that $50, $60 million and uh, what do they do? They, they buy a, a whole bunch of ads, like you said, from ABC, NBC, and suddenly they're the sponsors for the debate. So you're right. The Free and Equal Network, um, we're going to be here to build others, you know, putting on you know, different, uh, wonderful, honest media, comedians, you know, just everybody, top, bottom, musicians, yourself, and so on, and creating that outlet through our network. And I guess you're right. I guess the best way we can uh, trust uh, funding, uh, publicizing a presidential debate the right way is you know, to see us through our own free and equal network and uh, uniting and working with everybody that we're building up, uh, you know, <laughs> and all those different, uh, you know, fields, again, musicians and well, you picked oh, such a perfect, awesome, pretty amazing yeah. stuff. <laughs> hey, you picked so. a perfect name. I think you're at like the quote unquote. The, you're 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 really a, in in a sense, at least politically. I mean, um, I mean, there's news media and stuff, but politically, I think you're at the tip of the spear. I mean, if um, this is what's going to drive the uh, changes. Um, I mean, there's many ways. I mean, I guess everyone could decide to quit paying taxes tomorrow, but that's more unlikely than people going out and, and maybe um, not voting for Republicans or Democrats and maybe giving third party and independent candidates, people who are more like themselves, um, a chance, like voting themselves into office because, I mean, we are the third parties and independents. I mean, we all are, and uh, this whole country is, um, unless if you're one of the few, um, you, you know, Democrats and Republicans. Um, and, and so we interviewed 60 people last year um, in 2014. I hope to interview 100, Wait, yeah. 100 wow. people. And I try to pick districts where they were the only third party or independent candidate. So um, it should be even more easier for people to pick someone because um, they might be a green or a progressive but not want to vote for that libertarian. But I would say even if you vote for that libertarian, think of the good things you're going to get, even just more open elections. So next time you might be able to vote for y your person, you know. But um, You know, you're right. It's a great start. But again, our leaders on the ground, libertarian, green alike, we're finding a lot of the big supporters from the Gary Johnson campaign, Jill Stein, I some are coming and soon to be more um, in supporting free and equal because they're recognizing that we are it, we're the way. And, you know, as leaders on the ground, libertarians, greens, and other parties alike, they realize that as the party gets bigger, uh, libertarian right now, um, there's a total disconnect between the national libertarian party and the state party leaders. 
to give you a prime example, when we held the Larry King debate, the National Libertarian Party did not even publicize it, a debate that their candidate participated in, moderated by Larry King, the National Libertarian Party did not publicize it at all, but I think almost all, if not every state leader throughout the United States of the Libertarian Party publicized it. So that says a lot right there, uh, that they don't listen um, you know, to their own leaders within their state, which is a prime example of why parties don't work. Um, but I love a lot of the leaders on the ground, those Libertarian Greens, and even some at the national level still that are fighting you know, to keep it pure, but <laughs> you can get one bad seed and that's it for the party. And, uh, you know, and so it's really great because I'm seeing a lot of these libertarian green leaders on the ground, like in Arkansas, Little Rock this spring, we're holding a huge event and look forward to coming on again and talking to you in greater detail about that. Um, We hope to break that story on Alex Jones, we'll see, but, uh, and so on, but uh, soon. And it's just, it's really fascinating to see these libertarian green leaders suddenly realize, like, wow, maybe I really am an independent, really, okay, parties really don't work because the logic is there. And all I can do is inform and, and educate and through intellectual conversation, those leaders have hopped on board with Green Equal and meeting them all face-to-face on the ground. It was really great earlier this year at a In the Fed rally, which I was the keynote for, which all the local media showed up for. It was so successful, TV, newspaper. And here we have now all these leaders uh, hopping on board with Green Equal. So, you know, uh, who knows Little Rock better than uh, the locals themselves and people who believe in our mission. So. Well, I'm an independent, too. I mean, I use a libertarian progressive because it attracts attention, and those are the two sides that is being said in the media. But, um, I mean, I want, you know, the empire to end. I want the drug war to end. I want our civil liberties recognized and free and equal elections. And uh, that will be a good start to, um, you know, the next renaissance. Um, Well, Christina, I I thank you again. And... um, Uh, It's been a pleasure. I look forward to seeing, you know, the future uh, progress of Free and Equal. And so I'll put all the links and everything people need to get involved. And look forward to talking to you in the future. And um, we'd love to keep in touch. I appreciate your time today. Feelings mutual. You're so lovely. And we'll be sure to link to your um, interview as soon as it is up on our site. And I look forward to interviewing with you again and again and again in the future. Take care. All right. Have a good one and beyond. Thanks. Bye. I thank you for listening, and as you can probably hear, the um, microphone I'm using here post-interview is a lot clearer, and I hope to be using this or something um, with the same quality for future interviews. Uh, LibertarianProgressive.com uh, started about a year ago. Um, I hadn't seen much attention to uh, a site that um, had a lot of interviews with third-party and independent candidates, so what I was thinking was... I would like to give some voice to third party and independent candidates. And that's why I did in 2012 from July to November, I interviewed 60 candidates just for fun as kind of a collage. It was a goal to get at least 50. I was hoping that maybe um, I'm just going to show the potential of uh, interviewing 50 people who are not Republicans, Democrats, people who are on the ballots had a legitimate chance to win um, and uh, should have been heard. I mean, if you get enough uh, signatures or if you get to get on the ballots and have a mathematical chance to win, you should be heard in the debates and, uh, you know, there should be fair elections. And uh, this is public information. So, you know, I think debates should be uh, it's about disseminating that information um, that's publicly on the ballots and uh, people that got in the Uh, on the ballots. Um, So I ended up interviewing about 60 people. And, um, and so, so on my website, libertarianprogressive.com, you can see a collage of six, about 60 interviews of um, 
imagine I was trying to do one that would represent each state. Basically, we have 50 states, interview 50 people. They're from all various states, etc. Just as a uh, glimpse of the possibilities. Um, there were some independent candidates elected to Congress this year. Um, not as many as would have liked, but there are some uh, midterm elections in 2013. I think there's three, but 2014 is what I'm really um, setting another goal for. I plan on doing 100 interviews and see how that goes. Uh, and and some some other plans here too, and and I might make a collage of like all the different interviews or something like that. But um, I have put up um, uh, as a store where you can get some t-shirts and things. I think they do look cool. Um, if you can purchase some of those to support, uh, we'd like to place some ads, uh, place some ads in some national newspapers and etc. that say stuff like, you know, instead of listening to the corporate debates or the same old Republicans or the repugnant crats, um, there are candidates that, uh, you know, represents you. I mean, after all, we are the third party and independent candidates. I, I mean, if you think you're part of the Republican and Democrat country club, then, you know, you're trying to be part of a crowd that uh, doesn't want you in there unless if you're willing to sell your soul like them. And um, so if you want people that are, you know, the, the people of America, the people of the country, um, people who aren't sold out, whether they're third parties, independents, etc., that uh, want to take their oath to the Constitution seriously, this is a way, besides, you know, everyone protesting and not paying taxes, I mean, if we could get the whole country to, to um, just, you, you know, strike, then, yeah, maybe that would be one way. Here's another way also. Um, elect as many non-Republicans and Democrats as possible in 2014. 2016, 18, 20, 22, and beyond. I mean, maybe we'll get 10 in 2014. Maybe we'll get 50. Uh, spread the word, share the message, and, um, and uh, you know, whether you want to vote for them or not, here's one argument I think um, that anyone can agree with, whether they're Republican, Democrats, uh, whatever, um, a Whig or Tory or, or whatever, is that whether you, you agree with... Um, a person's policies, if they get enough signatures to be on the ballot, shouldn't they be at least allowed to the debate? I mean, don't you want to see what all your options are, especially like the elections are publicly funded? And if someone gets enough signatures on the ballot, don't you think you should be able to hear from them and, and for them to get equal time in the debates, not just be invited to the bit debates just to get five minutes here and there, but to have equal time if they have the same shot of winning as uh, your Republicrats. Uh, so that's really it's in a nutshell. I mean, until the election season starts in 2014, what I've decided to do is interview organizations. I showed in 2012 basically that there are at least 50 people that could have been voted for that would have stood up to um, the end of the drug war, the end of the empire, recognizing your civil liberties, uh, free and fair elections, uh, open and uh, transparent and honest, accountable uh, governments. But, um, you know, we'll still have to keep working hard at that. And um, so what uh, we, we're showing now in this 2013 mid-cycle year is uh, I want to show about 50 organizations that are working to um, uh, help that cause. And uh, so we're interviewing people like Christina Tobin, and I just interviewed Noam Chomsky, um, uh, Tony from the NPA, the New Progressive Alliance, and we'll be doing more and more. There's a lot of groups out here like this. There's a lot of people that uh, are organizing, and um, I think if people are tired of getting 3% of the votes, um, you, you know, voting for alternative candidates that uh, are more qualified in, in, in most situations, i uh, you know, let's focus on some of the big priority goals that we can agree on, and maybe some of the other ones will work themselves out or we'll be able to. I mean, if the only thing we had to argue about were the things we legitimately disagree on, it would be a much better world. I mean, there are so many things that people do agree on. And, uh, you know, we're long overdue for uh, another re renaissance. So, um, 
peace, peace out, and uh, you know, keep in touch. Please uh, comment, share, subscribe. Uh, suggestions are always good, and um, and I'll be making some more interviews and and, and keeping up to date here. Um, if you have any ideas of interviews or candidates or your candidate yourself, please get in contact. Uh, LibertarianProgressive.com. If you like doing interviews yourself, um, you know that might help with some of uh, the workload. So um, you know, just as long as we can verify that they're the actual candidates and and you put the interview up in full, we can uh, might might want to uh, you, you know publish some of those interviews. So uh, until next time, take care and have a good one.